on Tuesday, Nigeria will be celebrating 59 years of independence as a nation. So what kind of 59-year-old are we looking at? So Nigeria is Africa's most populous country with an enterprising people. More than 50% of the nation's population is young. And Nigeria boasts some of the most intelligent and smartest people on the planet. Yet, this nation of some 180 million people still has a problem finding its feet in a fast-paced world. At 59, many are asking, what is the way forward in the face of so many challenges? That's what we're going to be looking at today. What should we be doing? Where are we heading? We have a panel this morning made up of a legal practitioner, Mr. Oscar Ogundiwe. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we also have Mr. Isaac Balame of Nigeria Rebirth Foundation. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having as me. As well as Aniekan Nia Etok, who is a policy analyst. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Well, since we are mentioning that 50, more than 50% of Nigeria's population is young, I would like to start with Aniekan. <laughs> 59 years old. That's what we shall be by Tuesday. How do you think we have done? as a nation? Well, I, I think the, I think in, in asking the question, you, you may have given me an expo, if you will, into the answer. The easiest way to do it is to, is to conceive a 59-year-old man and, and try to figure out at what stage he is based on his age, right? You want to look at what he has done with himself over the last 59 years. And there are certain expectations you know, that, that, that come across with that conception. If at 59, he's still trying to figure out how to walk and how to talk. Then, then I, he's got a problem. Then I think that, I, I think that <laughs> it's evidence that while there have been strides made, um, while there have been attempts, and while we still see a lot of attempts to put things in, in place, I believe that there are fundamental challenges that need to be addressed, root causes as opposed to cutting off branches, that need to be addressed if this 59-year-old man is to have any hope of making any significant impact before his day is up. Oscar, your thoughts, please. First of all, let me thank you. Um, you started with a young man, and um, he said something very beautiful. He decided to use a 59-year-old man. <sighs> My thoughts. Very simple. Blood, sweat, and tears for 59 years of independence is not good news. It's just not good news. Because at 59, you should be at cruising level. You should be flowing. In other words, if you were flying, let me talk like my chief... Uh, Chief Justice, if you were piloting, you should be cruising by that time, but not still wobbling and trying to take off and trying to land. I will stop it at that until we go further in. <sighs> Balami. Well, I think uh, they have actually said it all. Um, if 50, I mean, at the age of 59, you should be thinking of retiring. But in this case, we haven't even started. However, I think we can also look back and still thank God for the fact that we are still, there, there is still Nigeria. And because there is still Nigeria, uh, I think there is hope. It's just for us to look inward and tell ourselves the truth. It's just for us to look inward and pray that God will give our leaders, most of them, let God give them a real heart. Because if you look at what has happened from independence till date, it's like everything is just accidental, reactional. It's like, boom, what do we do? OK, where is this? Where is that? And there's no deliberate plan, strategic plan. Everybody just think of four years, eight years, and that is it. I've never seen a leader saying 100 years plan for this country. I'll come back to you and that 100 years plan, but let me come back to Mr. Mwondiwe. 
when Alea was introducing this segment, she said something about Nigeria having some of the best brains. <laughs> and indeed, and indeed we do, because if you look mm -hmm. around the world, around the world, mm -hmm. you find Nigerians who are doing tremendous things, mm -hmm. who are making impact, making waves, and some of them are leading industries out there. Mm -hmm. But that tells us that this nation and its people is loaded. But when it comes to those plans, and again we hear that some of Nigeria's policies have been used as study documents mm -hmm. in schools like Harvard and all of that. Mm -hmm. So how is it that we find ourselves in this pass? And I, I bring it to you because <laughs> yeah. you are, if I may use this example, of the older generation. Yes. So how is it that we are at this point? What would you say is the reason? Um, first of all, it is a little bit historical the history we never want to go back to. I'll ask a question. This question has been asked so many times. Let me start with the first person who asked me that question in 1986. It was an Indian in London. He said to me, most Nigerians I have met are so intelligent. So what is wrong? I couldn't answer. 1986 to now is how many years? As far back as the year of our Lord, 1922, the Governor General of Nigeria at the time, Sir Hugh Clifford, made a statement. What did he say? He said, I doubt the ability of any Nigerian to manage the affairs of Nigeria. 1922. 1972, 50 years after, our own Right Honorable Namdi Azikiwe, he said, when who Clifford made that statement in 1922, he found it preposterous. But today, he's beginning to wonder, looking at the attitude of a number of the Nigerian politicians, and it dis it, he feels dismayed that Nigeria will go in this way. 1972. Then the same Zeke tried to become president in 1979. We know what happened thereafter until he passed on. The truth is we have been moving without vision. We have been moving with a group of people who there's this, I call it insecurity. It's like it's tribal insecurity, but we, 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 we use other names for it. We call it tribalism, but the truth is it is insecurity. But I dare to ask you, is it tribal insecurity or individual insecurity foisted on the tribe? Have you looked at it from that angle? Beautiful. You've just done something good for me. That is where it starts. It starts with the person. When you feel so insecure with yourself, then you find tribe as something you can hold on to. And that is what has kept us down. And what is going on? People are lying to people. Look, you know, any problem you have is because of that man from that other tribe. So you're totally focused on that. You're not focusing on your problem. Mm. But your problem really is next door to you. Mm. But you're looking at the other man. And we have all been in this circle. And you use the word that we're intelligent? No. Maybe we're brilliant. Intelligent people take challenges and they sort they solve their problem. Whatever the problem is, they take it as a challenge and they solve it. Brilliant people, they copy very well. That's all we have been doing. Even copy, copy we can't do too well. <laughs> and <you> can, um, <laughs> Mr. Woodway mentioned something which we lack, a vision. No vision. We mm. keep talking about this vision, mm. vision, vision. Where are we going to find this leader who is going to give us a vision? Mm. And what should our vision be for the next 10, 20, 50 years? Mm. Well, I, I'm very happy that, you know, we seem to all be thinking in a similar line because the minute he mentioned vision, he hit exactly what had been on my mind for a long time. And then you're asking the same question. But before then, I just want to, if I can just quickly address the issue of how we're, you know, a lot and we're brilliant and we're doing the best. We need to create, in my opinion, a clear dichotomy between the individual and the collective. You can have a 
you can have a thousand and one intelligent, brilliant people. But you see why, why they make it in other climbs? It's because those climbs are geared for the collective. So they're looking for people who can take their skills, who can take their attitudes and behaviors for the betterment of the collective. The outlook is the collective. And that's why the vision is for the collective. It doesn't matter how many PhD and uh, you know, professors we have and how many people are industry leaders wherever they are. It really doesn't matter because they're still individuals. We need to be able to take this macro. Now, to answer your question, where do we find the leader that will then you know, sort of moderate the process? And I want to say moderate that process because the vision must be crowdsourced. Mm -hmm. There are too many of us from different, with different sort of stratifications, whether it's tribal, or it's social, whatever just, it is, that you need something that will cover everybody. So we're looking at a national vision. Where do we find it? It's around us. But unfortunately, we do not have a predisposition to find that thing. We do not have a predisposition to find those particular skills in people. I keep saying this. In my personal opinion, every single election cycle, we have credible people who run. We laugh them down. We'd say that they don't have structures, as if structures are not people like us who then put their, who join their forces together to be able to deliver something. They are all around us. This is my personal opinion, subject to superior arguments. They are all around us. Unfortunately, we are not looking for those sorts of people. We are driven by our ego and our sense of appearance more than functionalism. If we are looking at functionalism, it becomes easier to say, what do we need? Who has it? If you're not asking what do we need, you cannot find who has it. It's not possible. This is my personal opinion again. Mm. So I'm thinking to myself that the challenges that we face in Nigeria based, you know, tribalism or, or, or tribal, tribal uh, you know, concerns or things of that nature can only be treated, if, if that is a word to be used, if we have a vision that unites all of us irrespective of where we're from, what we do, how we look, we're tall, we're short, we're black, we're this, we're that. That national vision will be crowdsourced. It comes from us. Because if it doesn't come from us and it's forced upon us, it won't stick. It has to be organic. We'll buy in. It has to be organic. Yeah. So you need somebody who says, I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to look, I'm willing to observe. What are we all looking for? Because that's what the Americans did and that's what is called the American dream. It is an aspiration that they all have, regardless of whether they're from the south or they're from the north or the east or the west. So to find the, the leader that will deliver this, if we're saying that we do not have that, we first need to ask, what do we want? Then we say, who has it? That's the way I choose to look at it. It comes from, it comes from it, that, that place, and then we see who has the capacity to deliver that. Is it possible to do, like, as you say, crowdsource? Is it possible for the entire nation, the entire mm -hmm. citizenry, to begin to put forward, for instance, three questions. Mm -hmm. What do we need? Yes, mm -hmm. you said that. What do we have? And where do we want to go? Mm -hmm. Or who do we want to be? Mm -hmm. Is it possible for the entire nation to put that together in the form of, like, a um, poll? Who listens to the polls? That's the other side of it. Because mm. they'll tell you all these conversations we've been having. Mm. But who's listening? Palami. National conferences here and there. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see, um, let me go back to what but, you said. Sorry, let me yeah. hold, ask you to pause a bit and ask you this question. Okay. You're a politician. From what uh, Mr. Ondue said, this whole thing boils down to the political class. Exactly. Um, they are thinking. 1922, 1972, 1999, uh, 2011, 2007, 2011, 2015, <coughs> 19, 2019. The thinking of the politician, from what he says, looks like is what has kept us here. Yeah. So would the politician in you allow this, what do we need? What do we have? Where do we want to be? Or who do we want to be? Good question. And uh, you see, uh, like he did say, what do we actually need? Who has it? The question is, we know what we need. So what do we need? <laughs> we need good governance, good leadership. 
We need people that have a heart that all this thing is, all they see is their people, not just after themselves. The issue with the country is the level of selfishness and greed is so high. Somebody today is in power, all he thinks of is his children, his wife, or his wife. And then how much can he talk out there, whether in Europe or in the States? And to him, that is the security he needs. But you see, I'm happy because things are changing. It's obvious that our leaders are now seeing clearly that if you don't fix this mess, if you don't fix this nation, you have no place to go to. South Africa is beautiful, yes. But today we are being sent back home. The point is, this is one country, and back to what my brother just said. When you exhibit this visionary leadership style, passion, charisma, they come after you. <laughs> Nigeria. They know that this guy or this lady has the solution to fix this mess. But in as much as in trying to solve that problem, nothing will come into their own pocket, let it die. They don't care. They have enough savings in France or whatever. And that is how they see it. But it's changing. And the point is, I was, I mean, in the last few years, I've had the privilege to meet few veterans that fought the civil war and what have you. And I've been, you know, as a young guy, you know, you know to, just to hear from them what actually went wrong, what is happening. And one elder said something that hit me. He said, Balami, do you know what? I'm now in my late 70s. The truth of the matter is that we have failed you guys. That is the truth. But I want you guys to appreciate our generation for one thing. We fought a serious battle to keep this country together. Please, we don't have what it takes to take it to the next level. But you guys, some of you guys school overseas, you have the, the exposure, you're very, very smart, you have to make it happen. And that brings me back to, you know, the way forward. We'll, we'll get to that way yeah. forward, but I'll, I'll take this in stone all the way. But based on what Anir can tell about, we laughed them down. He said again, the elder told him, you guys have this thing yeah. to take this nation forward. Mm -hmm. Anir can tell something earlier, we laughed them down. Yeah. Um, Monsieur Shreitien sent in this tweet. He says that Nigeria's future is in the hands of her citizens and not the poster boy politicians. Mm -hmm. We give them on due clout. So true. There is, uh, for the two things that said, um, there's a man that actually put it very sweetly. His name is Professor Tam David West. After he came out from jail, he, for a cup of coffee and, uh, and a wristwatch, mm. he said, all things bright and wonderful, Nigeria kills, kills them, them all. all. Mm. That was a poem we used to recite as kids, but then he brought it out and put it that way. Then, from what um, Balami is saying, it became obvious. He has been there. He's practiced this politics. I have not been. And what did he notice? The same thing. What did you find? Conspiracy of the dunces. And that's, he put it in English, we laugh them down. <laughs> Do you understand? You see this conspiracy, it continues to go. I will no longer blame anybody who is a leader in Nigeria. I blame the people. Reason, people thrive on the inadequacies of others. If we, you send your child to school, children love to play, and you're not interested in checking his report card, he will continue to fail. It's as simple as that. It is only sanction that makes us behave well. But we as a people, when we find it difficult to organize, Look, let me use the MBA, for instance. Whatever is happening in the judiciary, everywhere I go now, you say you're a lawyer. Oh, you, you people, that's all you get, okay? Because now it's in the news, the social media is abusing everybody. When Akaba Shonru was MBA president, Nigeria sat up. It was even during the military. But guess what? 
the smart guys immediately learned, oh, okay, you know, we can actually get a problem from here. Anytime there's going to be an NBA election, government is fully involved. Every person that is a lawyer that is working in the civil service, they'll, make sure, they'll pay for it. Make sure you go for that bar. Make sure you go there, and this is where you should be voting. It is happening. So now, anything could be happening in the judiciary. Do you hear anybody talking? And if you talk, particularly in this own government, they look for something and put on you as NBA president, put some scandal on you, and that's it. You're there trying to pull yourself out. The, this, it's now a war because patriotism has been defined differently. Patriotism is not about you being patriotic to the laws of the nation and the nation. No, it's about your loyalty to the person in power, his whims and his caprices. This is what we have done. What makes it funny is that these people luckily have children. In fact, most of them have more children than I have. And they've never one day. So it's, it's got nothing to do with them not liking Nigeria. It is them not knowing what they're doing. Because if you know that your children will remain in that society and will suffer for the abuse you give the nation today, okay. you may change your mind. So let me just read this tweet. Ugiagbe says, I want Isaac to tell us what he thinks about the Nigerian constitution and its impact on, the, on Nigeria's future with things like exclusive lists. Put that on one side, please. Tony Naiwo Ojujun says, our leaders in Nigeria, are they unconscious, incompetent, or conscious, incompetent? Are they unconscious, incompetent, or conscious, incompetent? That's from Tony. Ashiwaju Olushegun Dosumu says, Balami said the elders admitted that they have failed us. May I ask him if they've agreed to allow the youth take over in 2023? Three. And finally, Innocent Okpanum says, Nigeria at 59 remains and will remain in a comatose country until those professionals in the built environment recognize their roles as the leaders. Nigeria's renaissance is in the hands of those in the built environmental professions. So we don't get that. Okay, but let's look at the strategy for the way forward. Let me start with you, HR consultant. Tell us. Let's think. How do we move forward? If you're going to move forward, you need to figure out, again, my opinion, if you're going to move forward, you need to figure out why we are here. You need to drill down. Not the obvious answer. Because I'm sure if you ask why are we here, people will tell you the leadership is bad, the poverty. Yes, those things are true. But we need to drill down. Finding the way forward, and I speak as a HR consultant and as a sociologist, you must understand what informs people's behavior. If you don't, you can never, ever change that behavior or that mindset, as, as some of us like to say. You can't change that. So if you drill down, you spend the time to find why do we behave the way we do. And I, I believe that a lot of us is out of fear, fear for the unknown. So we are comfortable addressing the things that we, we can see because we don't know how else to think of anything else. I think that there's a lot of fear of the unknown, which then sort of prop, you know, propels people to then look at ideas like hope. And you want to hope that somebody does something. You want to pray for your leaders to, and hope that maybe they will act a certain way. It's out of fear. This is my opinion. I also think that a, a lot of times in trying to figure out the way forward, you have to be able to put together the different elements over time historically, which is why I appreciate the fact that we have looked at history, because until you understand where you're coming from and why you have come this way, you have absolutely no hope of But, but I, I, yeah. I thought that laws were brought in mm -hmm. to, to help resolve chaotic situations, like mm -hmm. this area mm -hmm. where you're not, you, you are hoping mm -hmm. that the person will not let go of mm -hmm. benevolence, mm -hmm. the person will not let go of that good side and take on the bad side. I thought mm -hmm. the laws were there, respect for the laws, the mm -hmm. constitution. Is that not supposed to help in all of this? How can the laws, our constitution help in planning our way forward? Of course it can. Why not? Not this one. Constitution which tell, tells a lie of itself. Not this one. Uh, let, we, can, can we have allow Balami to? <laughs> <laughs> so let, let us look at how would that help? You I see, mean, we have laws. You see, you see, you see, the issue is that it is this our constitution. Was it actually who wrote it? 
It wasn't with the people. That is the issue. So because okay. it is not with the people, I'm sure someday, maybe in our lifetime, it will come to a point where we'll have to revisit these whole issues. Granted. So is it because we didn't write it that we will not abide by it? Well, that is now? different. You see, you cannot force people to, because I mean, I am not in the position to make people abide by it. We all find ourselves in this whole mess, and we just have to find a way out of it. And like I did say, um, we have gotten to a point where we don't have a choice anymore. It's either we make this thing work, or everybody will be engulfed in it. So time has come, we must all put all hands on deck to see how we can begin to make things happen. Did someone ask directly a question earlier about the exclusive list thing? Would that be, should that be part of the future? No. no. Yeah. Okay. okay, so what do we, no. consequence management system. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I love history. By the time we had independence in 1960, we had a different constitution than we had now. That constitution allowed for you to be what you can be. The states took care, or call it the regions, took care of their own affairs. And what happened? Nigeria saw progress. In short, we, history of Nigeria records progress from 1960 to 1966, end of story. It has not gone after that time. What is the reason? Now, the Southwest, those were the days when Awolowo decided he started a television station. And then he called it First in, in Africa. Africa. Okpara felt challenged, he started his own, and called it second to none. <laughs> <Competition was good. laughs> Namdi Aziki will set up University of Nigeria in Nsoka and say, this is it, the lions. This is where we train the lions. I will always set up University of Ife. Amadou Bello had to quickly rush out and set up that one in, um, Zaria. in, in Zaria. Yeah. That was the competition. The Healthy. South, the Eastern yeah. region had the fastest growing economy in West Africa. From what? Agriculture. And the land is still there. Nothing has changed. The land did not change. Climate change has not gotten there now. But we've all ignored it. And we're looking for used clothes to sell. Now, so many things. If you create that atmosphere for competition, you will see Nigeria move again but it was completely killed by the military. Then they appropriated today. At that time, in the 60s, federal government had 20% of the annual budget. Today, they have 52%. 52%. That is why the corruption goes in billions. It doesn't go in small money. They're, what do they do with the money? What is federal government's business with agriculture? Where is their land? Why are these things? So you talked about exclusive legislative list. Those items there will continue to kill Nigeria. If you do not take this constitution and throw it away, we will go nowhere, no matter the strategy we discuss here. Some people profit from it. Why? Because they create, you know, roadblocks where they make money. Federal government wants to legislate on practically every single thing. Why on earth are we up to 180 million, like you said, because we're still confused about our population, and we have 300 and something, or maybe 400,000 policemen, all controlled by one man in Abuja. What does he know about my village? This is a problem. And they are not even well paid. So tell me the reason why we should do it. There are so many things. Number one is that before any country can move, it's like you're planting on the right soil. It must be on the soil of law and order. Nigeria has not invested in law and order at all. We've invested what? We spend more money on politics because we want office, because of the perquisites of office than we spend on health care that we spend on education, that we spend on any other thing, just politics. If you're discussing politics, billions come out. If you're discussing health, a few thousands come out. So we, we, we feel better. Look at the kind of people. We feel better going abroad for treatment, and it's classy. We feel better sending our children abroad 
I remember there was a time when I was in school in this country, people were coming from South Africa to, to universities in Nigeria. Coming from America? From America to universities in Nigeria. in Nigeria. And when our boys live here, the, our boys who studied medicine, if they go abroad, one sitting declare, declare their exams. What is going on? They say, and that's when Nigeria was respected. Can we bring back this spirit? It is easy, but some people say over their dead body. Can I just quickly say something? I, I would like to appreciate you, you know, for, for the, the historical nature of your contributions. Most of what you say, my generation does not know, I know. at all. I know. So it's <laughs> difficult for us to begin to envision a Nigeria that has never even been told to us as stories. Yeah, they killed history in schools. I was telling yes. a young person mm -hmm. yesterday that when I was little, if the ECN, Electricity Corporation of Nigeria, yeah. if there was going to be an outage, they would mm -hmm. give you like a week's notice. Mm -hmm. On radio. And in the newspaper. And it's still happening in Cameroon today. By but we had Tuesday to next week, mm -hmm. at 10 a.m., there's going to be an outage. outage. It's going to last three oh hours, and you can take that to the bank. Mm. And this young person said, Oh. Mommy, this story where you did tell, I don't think saying are true. I said, so why would I lie? To us, you're describing America. <laughs> no, that's what I'm trying to tell you, that to, to us, you're describing it America. Ever happened here. It, 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 it is not a reality we can ever Identify come to terms with. with. Because throughout my, 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 you know, my educational years, <laughs> I never, <laughs> never, well, partly, maybe in the university, if I took history, I, I might have gotten some of this. Assuming the lecturer, you know, was, was, careful, was, was kind enough to tell me the truth about it. But I never came to terms with these things. So when you're explaining it to me, if you say there is a country that, or there was a country that at some point, if there was, there was going to be an outage, they would tell people, like, you would you never take it to say the Nigeria. I would never say Nigeria. Give me a hundred guesses. It won't come to me. So how can I begin to aspire to something that is not even in my realm of understanding? Good. Good. I'm happy for what you're saying. So how, how, how am I ever going to do that? Now, it's important because in, 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 this, in this discussion, I, I think that we see the problems of Nigeria because you see there must be a history that we can tap from. Correct. That history then energizes our aspirations as the younger ones who have the energy, who have the creativity. When the older ones have said, do you know what? This is how it used to be. I then say, wow, dad, you don't have the energy. Mom, you don't have the energy, but I do. And I think we can do it this way because of technology. We can do this, this, this. So what you do is you give me the base. And then I use my creativity and my energy and my vitality Beautiful. to be able to build on that. Yes. Ania, can yes, sir. Um, I, we used to go on the 7 o'clock bus from Tinubu to Balende to school every morning. The bus arrived at 7 a.m. on the nose. Every morning, mm. without fail, in Lagos. Mm. And it's possible to return to all of this, yeah. but I mean, it's possible. Yeah. Very, very possible. But can we achieve that without a national, a, a national mindset? As in, we before, can never. Before, <clears throat> before I am effort, or as they say, Atam, or Ibibu, or Anna. Or, so, or Shekiri, or Igbo. Even the Igbos, they have breakdown. <laughs> or Hausa, or Fulani, yeah. or Yoruba. Bura, Idoma, Igala. Thank you, Tim, Juku. and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Is it possible for us to achieve this? It doesn't matter. Because all of these existed when we had the regional thing. So what changed? You see, Can uh, we go back? The army. <laughs> no, the army is out now. We're back The army is actually out now. So let's talk. You see, first of all, First of all, you see, every day we try... Hold on. So I'm coming back to you on this one. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Every day, you see... You need to learn to be human. So, you see, yeah. every day we try to rebrand Nigeria. And you see, this rebranding thing cannot work. Because the issue is, when you talk about rebranding, call any of the... whether Coca-Cola or Pepsi, for example. They rebrand every year. They change the shape of their bottle, the color of the cup. They change the... 
how many CL, but the content still remains the same. The issue with Nigeria is we try to give the world an impression that we are back or we are coming back or we are now in charge, but the attitude, the content. So when you're talking about a national cultural orientation, a complete paradigm shift from the norm, whereby let's stop even fighting our leaders for once, whereby the way you drive your car, the way you even treat your own brother and sister, blood, that genuine love that used to exist in those days, it doesn't exist anymore. Whereby, well, I mean, if your it, leader is not doing right by you, you're not seeing any good roads, you're not seeing water, you're not seeing anything apart from him going around you town are very right. with a siren and the convoy of 10 cars, you are going to get annoyed with him. I agree with you. you see, but you see, the issue is that we, we have been lamenting too much, madam. Let me tell you this. For example, now, you agree with me that there's over 10, 12 million children that are not in school, that didn't go to school yesterday, Friday. Let's say in the 19th Northern State alone. The question is, realistically, even if you have a leader who has the passion and the energy to do that, can he build schools for all those children? You know, and that build schools. What happens? And that brings us back to the, the idea moment. that, for me, sometimes you even have a good leader, but maybe the ministers or the commissioners Somehow, somehow, the contractors, there are issues. It's a national culture. We shouldn't just look at the leaders alone. We should look at ourselves. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ondue, we're almost out of time. So let me read this, something that someone sent to me. He said, Don't forget I asked that's my a... question because it's, it's important for the youth. Which question is that? I think somebody Dosumu asked a question about the elders. Whether they are ready to, let go I'm still waiting it. for that. <laughs> You'll have 10 seconds to answer that no question. No problem. <laughs> he said, I asked a wise man, tell me, sir. In which field could I make a great career? And he said with a smile, be a good human being. There is a huge opportunity in this area and very little competition. In that cultural reorientation, the national thing, mm -hmm. you are an elder. Yeah. And he says that age, wisdom comes with age. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this. Mm -hmm. Can we let go of all this? Small, 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 tea, talks, whatever you call yourself. Mm -hmm. Let me use Atam, Ibibi, whatever it is you call yourself. Yeah. And be human yeah. to move this nation forward. Absolutely. Is that what will make the difference? Absolutely. That's, that's the truth. Number one, I, I belong to an association that now part of what we're trying to do is we're preparing a code of standards. A code of standards for those who aspire to political office from our area. We're doing that. And once we do, the minute it is prepared, we'll continue to advertise it. It's not about where you come from. It's about what you can bring to the table. Excellent. We don't want to know where you are from. We don't want to know this way. Or if anybody is feeling insecure, stay where you are. This man can perform. Let him go ahead. And he cannot. He goes away. That is what. And we want to advertise it as a way of ignoring Abuja. So Abuja can continue with, oh, yes, oh, it is the turn of this person. It is the turn of this tribe. Let them continue because, again, it borders on insecurity. We want a code of standards. None of them will perform at the end of the day. But the minute we have a code of standards, there are people who are now watching. That is when you build no society moves without a vibrant, civil, organized civil society. Those are the people who will continue to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? Because if they have nobody to report to, they do what they like. What and once this? that organized civil society, you can't break them. I'm talking about people who have a resolve. People whose life is committed to, I want the best for my children. This is the orientation we want to start doing. Focus on your children. If you take 10 naira from this man, I was telling some women during politics, you go and take 20 naira from so so and so person, your child will never go to good school. You will never go to good hospital. Nothing will change, but you've just collected 20 naira and you're dancing. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Ignore the 20 naira, let the man put it in health. In, in one of the newest presidents in the, in the world came into office and he told those working with him, he says, don't put my picture 
in your office. You know that thing you enter and you see the president. You say, don't yeah. put my picture in It costs money. Puts the picture of your children. Beautiful. Because when you see that picture, hmm. you know that those are the people you are working That's for. Very, That's put the, the picture of your future. That's the way don't put go. my picture. No, we, we've got to close. We've got to close now. We've got to close now. Um, Nigeria at 59 is what we've been looking at. And unfortunately, there's never enough time when you're on television. We have been chatting with Oscar Owundiwe, a legal practitioner and le one of the leaders of Aka Ikenga. Yeah. Uh, Aniekan Ya Etuk, a policy analyst, as well as Mr. Isaac Balame of Nigerian Rebirth Foundation. Oh, I forgot to ask you what your foundation did, but we don't have time for that. It's right about now. national reorientation. Thank you okay. very much for coming, yeah. gentlemen, and uh, sharing your thoughts, giving us a very vibrant segment indeed. Mm -hmm.